Hello and welcome to the video. This video is in answer to a couple of questions from some Patreons and also a chat that I had with a friend of mine. We were at his uh, field and flying and one of his little wings he was using a multi-rotor motor with a little three-bladed prop, the kind of things we all have in our spares bin, and was complaining about the fact that even at 100% throttle, uh, it wasn't going particularly quickly and it was burning through a lot of amperage. And we talked about this and I thought, you know what? This is probably worthwhile putting into a video because choosing a motor and a prop for a fixed wing, there's a little bit of thought to it as well. And it's something that I don't see a lot of content on. The stuff that's kind of on the internet and in the forums is kind of going back to like 2013, even earlier in some instances. So in this one, I'm going to talk about a couple of the rules of thumb and give you some guidelines and talk about how I do it. Now, lots of the models that I'm getting in and flying here are things like this ZOHD Dart uh, 250. Uh, this one comes with either a little three-bladed prop for 3S or a larger two-bladed prop for 2S. And one of the tricks that I use, and we'll talk about a little bit more, is I cheat. I look at what manufacturers are putting in their planes and copy their power systems uh, because the guys who are making these things tend to put a lot of time and effort and thought and trying to uh, put a power system on it that will suit a wide variety of pilots and suit the airframe really well. Now the most common uh, scale that I tend to hear talked about is the watts per pound scale. This one here by my side ranges from about 50 to about 200 watts per pound. So the watts is how um, much power the motor is using and the pound is weight, pounds roughly 500 grams-ish. So uh, the, the idea is, is if you know the wattage of the motor and prop that you want to use and you know the weight of the model, you can kind of figure out where it needs to sit on this scale. Now, uh, even experienced builders that I know will use this as a rule of thumb and go for the kind of 100, 110 watts per pound for general flying. You can get away with a lot less if it's a very lightweight, floaty, glider-style plane with very low wing loading, so, you know, you can kind of just throw it without the motor and it'll just glide around the field. And an awful lot more if you have something that's built to be a race wing or you want to be able to, to do things like acrobatics or potentially hard 3D with it. But for most pilots, uh, for general aviation, you're going to kind of want to sit in the middle. Now, this is a rule of thumb, though, because this scale doesn't always work. If I map my Black Hawk setups for both the 1000 and 1250kV motors that I've tried on the model, they are very much at the higher end. And the 1000kV, although it was okay, wasn't a great choice for that particular kind of model. So you do have to take this scale uh, with a little pinch of salt and use a little bit of common sense. And that's kind of what I hope we'll kind of talk about in this video a little bit more. Now, one of the things you need to remember is that you're not just choosing a motor, you are choosing a motor and prop combination. Uh, these are the Sunny Sky motors at the moment that I'm using. If you go on to a website, uh, then this one's 3DXR. If you scroll down, it'll show you the recommended props for that particular motor and show you the amount of current and thrust that that particular motor is generating. And you'll find that for specific battery sizes, 3, 4, 5, 6S or more, it'll give you an idea of the prop that you need for that motor. And that's also very, very useful because you really want to be using wherever you can the biggest diameter prop. The reason for that is that smaller props uh, spinning faster are less efficient than larger props spinning slower. You can actually generate the same amount of thrust to give you the same amount of performance from the model, but it will consume an awful more power if you are spinning a small prop quicker than spinning a large prop slower. And that's why for me, I'm not a massive fan of the watts per pound scale because that kind of doesn't take that into account. Now this model came 
with two props. It came with a prop. This is a three-bladed 3S three um, prop for this 250. It also, in the box, came with a, a bigger two-bladed prop for a 2S setup. Now, I'm flying mine on 3S, so it has the 3S prop on. And that's kind of a bit of an indication of uh, the next little point. I've got a friend of mine who's a little bit of a tinker for just wanting to stick bigger props on it. Uh, you can't do that without taking into account the additional load of the motor and the power that it is going to use. Uh, and and also reducing the diameter of prop will also dramatically reduce the amount of power that the motor uses. So it's always best to try and spin the biggest prop that will fit on your model. Now it's less of a big deal for this guy. This is only about 260 grams, even with his little flight battery. So you know what? The fact that this isn't the world's most efficient setup doesn't really matter. But if you are building a big model where you want uh, a decent uh, amount of endurance and decent amount of speed, then you are going to want to know how big the maximum prop is that you can fit on there, because that is probably going to be the most efficient prop diameter that you can use for the model. So let's look at a few things about the stuff that we need to think about before we start choosing a motor and prop. Now I've already talked about the fact you need to know about the maximum diameter of the prop you're going to use. Ideally that's what you want to be shooting for, uh, but also be aware of the motor size. Motors come in lots of shapes and sizes. With this kind of little model, uh, you know, it's kind of stuck out the back. Things like the Black Hawk are the same, things like the Drax are the same. So it doesn't really matter the physical size of the motor. Some of the other models, things like Bixler's, have the model, uh, the motor in a little kind of uh, nacelle housing. So you need to know those diameters too when you're picking a motor. Also need to think about what kind of model it is that you are putting together. As you saw on that watts per pound scale, uh, there is a huge range from 50 to 200 plus watts per pound. And depending on the type of model and how you want to fly it, depends on where you want to be on that scale. If it's going to be a glider, you're not going to want the same amount of power on a glider as if you're going to be building a model that you're going to do hard 3D and do, kind of hang it from the prop. And I know that's pretty obvious when I've said it like that, but lots of people don't take that into account and look at other people's setups and how they fly and then try and copy them. And if they're not flying in the same way, that maybe isn't the best motor and prop setup for you. The last one is whether or not you want speed, endurance, or you want a combination of the both. Uh, with things like the Black Hawk, you, you can set up a power system where it will burn through a 5200 battery in the space of three or four minutes or with a thousand kV motor that I had here then it will kind of burn through a 4000 milliamp hour in about 20 minutes so again knowing what you want whether you want to go really quickly for short amounts of time or whether you want to fly a very long uh, time and be very efficient or be somewhere in, in between is really important to have in your head before you start looking at the specs now as I said at the beginning I cheat with this a lot the way I cheat is that I look at what manufacturers like Sonic Model, ZOHD, uh, Hobby King, what those guys are using for their particular models. Now, designers of planes when they're selling them, uh, particularly people like you know the Hobby Kings and those kind of guys, uh, Sonic Model, ZOHD, they will put a lot of time and effort in trying to come up with a good motor and prop combo for their model that will suit the majority of pilots. Now, if you're a speed freak, it's probably going to be too docile. Uh, if you are a long distance endurance freak, then it's probably not going to be efficient enough for you. But for the majority of pilots, it's probably going to be fine. And if you can find a model that's a similar weight, size and layout to yours. So this, you know, this is kind of a wing for all intents and purposes, but if it was something like a Bixler or a Skywalker, then with that kind of very floaty airframe, you're probably going to need a lot less thrust. But I would be looking at the kind of power system on that for a similar kind of plane with that kind of very elongated wing, maybe something like an AXN or a floater. So do try and crib some really good ideas and some research that the vendors have already done to give you a start of a 10. Now that start of a 10, you have to be a little bit careful of. Changing things even slightly can make a massive difference. Just adding a little bit of pitch to the prop, uh, reducing the overall diameter of the prop, uh, changing the cave of the motor can make quite a big difference. With the Black Hawk, 
going from 1000 to 1250 kV, keeping everything else the same. It uh, gave me an awful lot more top speed, but my cruise was probably about 10, 15 miles an hour faster, but it was using twice the amp draw. So be aware of that. Uh, tinkering around with things will change it a little bit and make a big difference to how long your battery is going to last. So with all that said, how do I actually do it? Well, I do it using the good old fashioned thrust per weight scale. Now, this is a little bit better in my humble opinion, uh, because what it allows you to do is actually see exactly how much thrust you're going to get. Because again, the amount of thrust that you can get from the setup uh, can be very different levels of efficiency. You can get the same amount of thrust from a little prop spinning very quickly as a big prop spinning very slowly but the big prop spinning very slowly is probably going to use an awful lot less of the juice. So I will look at the thrust of the motor, look at 100% thrust and again the kind of tables that run places like 3DXR are perfect for this. Looking at the maximum prop size that I can get on my model I'll look up what the maximum thrust is, I'll have a good idea how heavy the model is and then I can figure out whether or not that's going to be a good fit. If this model weighed a kilogram, then if it was going to be a very floaty model with big long wings, then probably 500 grams of thrust would be the minimum I'd put on it. Uh, but ideally I'd probably go for kind of a 700, 750 grams of thrust just to make sure that even in windier conditions, I could still make headway against a headwind. For normal stuff, I would probably go for one to one. So again, if this was a kilogram model, I'd look for a prop motor combo that could produce about a kilogram's worth of thrust and that will give a nice lively sports performance and then if I want to fly it like a ridiculously stole it and do more 3D I'd probably go for one and a half times the weight of the model in thrust so again if this was a kilogram go for 1.5 kilograms worth of thrust and that will mean you can prop hang it without too much problem at all at about three quarters two thirds throttle. But for most things, I would normally go for anywhere between 70, 80 to about 110% of the weight of the model available as maximum thrust. And again, you try and use the biggest prop that I can to do that to give me the maximum efficiency. Last few tips while we're talking about this, um, always use an ESC that has more capacity than the maximum amp draw the motor's going to pull with the prop that you're using. So say this motor is going to pull, let's for sake of easy math, uh, 10 amps at 100% throttle with the prop that I'm going to use it with. If that's going to pull 10 amps, then I would go for a 12 or 15 amp ESC. Now this is a common question I get. People get really nervous about specifying an ESC that has a higher capacity amperage than the maximum amperage that the motor is going to pull at full power. And again, you use those motor tables to find out what that is for the prop, biggest prop that you can fit on the model. Fortunately, the way it works is that the ESC only supplies the current that the motor is asking for. So it's not like if you put a 50 amp ESC onto a model where the motor is only ever going to need 20 amps. The ESC is going to try and cram 50 amps into the motor. It doesn't work that way. What it means is that even at full speed, the motor is going to pull the 10 amps it needs and the ESC is just going to be ticking over and isn't going to be stressed at all and will last a very long time. So I would always specify 15-20% more of the current in the ESC than in the motor. So again if this was 10 amps maximum or 100% throttle I would specify a 12 amp ESC, probably a 15 amp ESC. Maximum amp draw on my Black Hawk is about 35, 36 amps, and I'm using a 50 amp ESC. That gives me tons of headroom so that if uh, I do a very quick throttle change and the motor really sucks a lot of power, uh, the ESC doesn't care about that, even if it happens for six, seven, eight seconds at a time. Don't forget that the ESCs for things like uh, fixed wings do have a lot of additional settings. Most of them are accessed via stick combinations. Uh, you're going to have things like uh, the brake. You can turn that on and off. 
uh, having the brake on can be handy. It can kind of stop the prop. Um, I tend to leave brakes off because I'm quite happy for that. Uh, the other thing that you can find is how quickly the ESC changes from one level to another. Because props are typically a lot bigger on planes, uh, they have a lot more mass, it takes a moment for them to spin up. Again, rather than trying to use an awful lot of power in a very short period of time to change the speed, which is how the ESCs are working in our multi-rotors, on a wing they tend to be a little bit more considered. So if you want to go from 30 to 100% power, it won't do that instantly, there'll be a ramp up. And how quickly that ramp up happens is settable as well. I would normally put it in kind of the normal setting. There's usually kind of slow, normal and super slow. Uh, for really big props you want super slow, but for most stuff that we'll be using, uh, normal is usually fine. Unless you have some really bad, bad throttle discipline. Again, always try and use the largest prop that you uh, can fit on the model. That will give you the maximum efficiency for the thrust that you need. Uh, there are many different ways that you can produce the same amount of thrust with lots of different motors and props. If you are using the maximum diameter prop that you'll fit on the model, you're probably towards the more efficient end and it'll just give you longer flight times. There's no point in burning through battery if you don't need to and giving yourself a little bit more time in the air to have fun. And that leaves me the last thing to talk about really, which is what do you do if you have a motor and you can't find those thrust tables and you found it at the bottom of the bin? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. First of all is you can go on something like the eCalc website. I'll put a link down below. eCalc is fantastic for helping you figure a lot of this stuff out. The only downside, in my humble opinion, with eCalc is it can be overly complicated. There's lots of things in here uh, that you have to know in order to get the right answer. So particularly for me in the early days, I found that eCalc, oh, that's a fantastic resource, was just too complicated. So kind of borrowing ideas from other setups was how I got over that and seeing how other builders and manufacturers were doing it. If you are struggling and this is something that you want to do on a semi-regular basis, the best thing that I would recommend that you actually do is get yourself something like this. This is a little machine that I actually used uh, to do some thrust testing. So the way it works is that it's actually, if I turn it on, maybe I'll see it because the light, but there we go. Uh, as I uh, kind of apply thrust, it's actually like a set of scales, but it's measuring the thrust. So what you do is you put your motor and your prop on here, you stick a watt meter in front of it, and you run it up and you actually see how much thrust is coming off a prop. Occasionally you'll get into trouble. You do things like if you add a very big prop on something like a multi-rotor motor, and stick it on a fixed wing. Uh, you can have problems with excessive torque roll, so you can turn with the direction uh, that the prop is turning, but not against it. And it's just great to have kit like this if you're doing it a lot, to get that motor that you found in the spares bin, put some props on it and actually do some real world, world testing. Because once you know the thrust that it uh, is producing, you know the amperage that it's pulling, then you can kind of plug those numbers into the stuff that I've already talked about in the video. So in terms of my couple of things, if you remember nothing else from this video, is tip one, uh, rip off other people's good ideas. Uh, plagiarism is not a crime, particularly when it's something like this. It can uh, make a big difference. Second thing is always run the biggest prop that you can. Uh, it's not always physically possible. You know, part of the reason that ZOHD, I think, put this very small little prop on here is because a big prop, you're just going to have more blade strikes at the back when you come into land. And also it's a very light little model. But if you use the biggest prop you can to produce the thrust that you need, usually with a slower rotating motor, you will find that your flight time will last a lot longer. And the last tip is don't forget to balance your blades. The blades, particularly two bladed props, which is what I recommend you do. Uh, don't use three bladed unless you really have to. But if you balance the props on a plane, it will also make the flying a lot nicer as well. So hopefully that was interesting for those of you that were kind of looking at this stuff. Uh, it is a little bit of a black art, but hopefully there's some tips and tricks in there that will steer you out of trouble.
Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.